I, as I walked around, I saw some pretty interesting things. I saw a lot of like, here's another point, and a triangle or a square was drawn. Ooh. We need to talk about this. Um, let's, instead of talking about why that's not correct, let's get into just what is correct. I think it might clear all that up. Okay. Um, let's start with what other points have you all found? What other points have you guys found? Or could you do one quickly and share it with us in a moment? Uh, I've got two positive three. Two positive three. So let's just. I put a two for x. Right. Good. A good explanation of, of what I'm even asking for here, right? Because points. Uh, are at a certain place on the plane, and the, that place tells you a couple of different numbers, and those numbers tell us something about the function, right? So to find a point, we need to we'll find those two numbers. And the first number is an x. And you're saying that when you plug in 2, what did you get? I got 2 positive 3. Okay. So we're just going to confirm it together, or maybe catch a mistake. We'll see what happens. <coughs> so there's the function we're using. Uh, plug in 2 for x, 2, negative 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 1. So, we talked about this at length last time here when we have a negative times a 2 squared, the 2 is going to get squared and then multiplied by the negative, so it's a negative 4. Negative 3 times 2, negative 6 plus 1. Okay, so we'll just fix it. Negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10, plus 1 is negative 9. Yeah, that's what it's uh, Negative Sorry about that. No problem. Now we have another point. Negative, or sorry, 2, negative 9. 2, negative 9. represent that if we plug in 2, we get out negative 9, we can represent that information as a point on the graph, 2, negative 9. x is 2, the output is negative 9, the output in this case we're calling f, so we can call it the f axis. Aiden, you have another one? Negative 2, you get positive 9. Negative 2, positive 9. Okay, let's see what happens here. Negative, negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. All right, so here's the negative 2 inside the where, where x was. Okay, we're going to square it, or we're going to multiply it by a negative and make it a positive. Square it first. Right. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. And this is positive 4. Multiply that by a negative, we have a negative 4. Negative 2 times negative three, or sorry, negative three times negative two. Six. Positive six, plus one. Here we have negative four plus six is two, plus one is three. So negative two, positive three. Negative two, let Negative 2, 3, let's represent that as a point. Negative 2 was the input, 3 was the output, so that's where the point would go. And just by where that point is, it tells us that input and output information. Molly? Um, I got the point 3, negative 17. I plugged in 3 for x. Good. 3, negative 17, let's see how that works out. 3, negative, 3 squared, uh, minus 3 times 3. Plus one, right? Should have uh, minus three. Okay, okay. Just make sure that works out. Three squared is nine, and that nine is negative. Minus another nine. Plus one, so we get negative eighteen. Plus one, negative seventeen. So three, negative. There's really no shape you can make with this. We're getting there. Three negative seventeen. Now here's a kind 
kind of a problem. If we go three, uh, at least on my graph, I don't really have room to put that. I'll just put it as far down as I can fit a point right there. I'm at four, aren't I? Should be at three. It's not quite far down enough, but it's a good idea. So should we go to four, you think? Plug in four? No. We can try it. What do you think will happen? Um, I got negative. Did you go back up? I got negative 27 when I plugged in 4. You did 4 and you got negative 27. Seems to kind of be fitting. The farther you would go out, the more you go out. Or you could do like a negative. You go this way. Kind of looks like the negatives turn into positive. If we look at these points as well, like I plugged in negative two, what did I get? Three. Plugged in negative one, I got three. Plugged in one, what did we get then? Negative three. Plugged in two, got it what? Negative nine. Plugged in a three, negative 17. So getting negative 27 when we plug in four, are we all that surprised? We got negative 27. It seems like the bigger the positive number we plug in, the more of a negative number we get out. And then the negative number that we put it, it gets higher. It gets higher, it'll just get it higher, higher, higher. No, it seems like it's staying at three. Oh, maybe it just hangs out at three and we'll just get three forever. But well, we might as well try it out, right? Yeah. Anybody plug in like negative three or negative four? Yeah. Negative three, you did? Yeah. You got one? Let's see. Uh, so negative, negative three squared minus three times negative three plus one. We'll square the negative three, that's negative three times itself, that's a positive nine. And you multiply that by a negative, so that's a negative nine. Negative three times negative three, it's positive nine, those are canceling each other out, plus one. One. So the point negative 3, 1 is on our graph. So that theory of it just getting 3 all the time, that's not working out. So but it, it's going to come back down to this point here. Molly? When I did, um, uh, when I put in negative 3, at first I did, um, Negative three to the power of two, and then that's uh, negative nine, and then I times the negative nine by negative, then that would be positive nine. But then negative three squared should be positive nine, right? I negative three negative. squared is negative three times negative three. Oh. Right, see that I've replaced x with a number. The number I replaced yeah. x with is negative three. But we were doing it different yesterday. You we weren't. We were doing it the same. We just never really plugged a negative number in there, I don't think. So we replaced this x, we took it out, we plugged in instead a negative three. What's happening to x? X is getting squared and then multiplied by a negative. X is being made to multiply by itself. Once that x, exactly what x is, multiplies by itself, then we multiply by a negative. So in this, in this case, x is negative 3. Negative 3 is the number I should be multiplying by itself. Oh, negative 3 times negative okay. 3 is positive 9, but there's that negative if out there. The, if like, um, the 2 was in the parentheses, then it would be negative 9. It would be a different nine. story, yeah. Be, oh. yeah. But it's not, because... What we want to do is we want to take a number and multiply it by itself. And the number that we've chosen in this instance is it's negative. Negative. Right. So right. So I just put uh, just get on, on the calculator. Um, negative four uh, put into that equals negative nineteen. Negative four. <coughs> negative nineteen. Let's try it out. Negative negative four squared minus three times negative four plus one. Negative four times negative four is positive 16. They put a negative on there, negative 16. Negative three times negative four is positive 12 plus one. Negative 16 plus 12, negative four plus one. Ah, I did that wrong. Negative three. Whoops. I thought it was gonna be eight. Oh, 
I see. Okay. So we just do negative three, negative four. Yeah. Negative three. Negative four. Negative three. So then you do negative five. You can negative five. I'll see what we Straight to negative five and see what we get. Go ahead and plug that in and see what you get. Again. And then we're all on the same page. We're plugging negative five into the function. So for those of you who threw three dots on there and made a triangle out of it, or four, four dots on there and made a square, okay? If you put five dots, you would have made a, a, a pentagon. The thing that you're missing is what a graph is, okay? Uh, it's a pretty common misunderstanding that a graph is really like some steps that you take. Put some points, connect the dots. It's not connect the dots and make whatever shape there, the dots make. Not, it's not exactly that because um, where do all these points come from? Um, from coordinates. From coordinates, which come from the function. And how do we how do we get these coordinates for out of the function? For the input and output. We put some input in there and we get the output. We make a record of that. Right? We make a note of that. We can write it down here, or if I did this, you know, work over to the side or whatever, I didn't want to exactly write the coordinates, I could just plot the point. Right? And the point tells me that information as well. I could write it down, negative two, three, or I could put a point that says that when you plug in negative two for the input, you get three for the output. Okay. So, I mean, if you drew three points and drew a triangle, well, what happens if you draw a fourth point? Should it be a square? No. It should be a square. What if I draw a fifth point? And then if I draw five points, what if I draw six points? How many points can I make? As much as you want. As many as you want. This could be your job for the rest of your life. And then it could be your children's job and your grandchildren's job to just plot points from this function. The point I'm making is how many points are there? Infinite. The infinite number of points. You'll never run out of points to plot. But then that proposes the problem because now we don't have enough time to plot all of the points. So there's this, uh, this, this, this problem, because the, the graph itself is an infinite number of points, but we don't have enough time to graph all those points. So when it comes time to, quote, connect the dots, what we're really doing is guessing where all of the rest of the points should go. Let's say that one more time. When we connect these points, however we decide we're going to connect them, we're making a guess. What are we guessing at? What are the points that we have? The points that we haven't plotted yet. Yeah. Okay. And the points that would be really tedious to plot. Points like um, the one that would wind up somewhere in here that I would plug in 0.25 for the input. I'm going to plug 0.25 into that input, 
square it, multiply 0.25 by 3, that's not going to come out very nicely, except for going to be a decimal. Right? The output is going to be some decimal. And then even more tedious would be if I had to plug in 0.37562. Right? But that's one of the inputs that I would have to plug in if I was going to graph all of these infinite number of points. Did you catch my drift here? Yeah. Okay. There's lots of points out there. And so many of those points would be so tedious to even figure out where they are, so we guess. We guess. So let's run through one of those guesses. Let's just make a guess at one of those points. When I, what's that? You have a guess? Yeah. About what? Which point? Negative 17. The next point's going to be negative 17 for this one. Point has two coordinates. What, what are the two coordinates? Uh, negative 6. Negative 6, negative 17? Yeah. That's your guess? Yeah. Negative 6, negative 17. That seems like a pretty good guess. Why? Because it's going, everything's lining up the same. It's lining up the same. It seems like this shape, whatever it is, has a nice symmetry. Right? If I see something on the right, I will see another point on the left. Right? <coughs> your image of that point. And if that's true, then here's this point at negative 17. Right? If we flip it over that imaginary line we're drawing with our, with our mind's eye, it puts a point right there. Okay. How about, let's guess in between some points. Instead of just e extrapolating, which is to just continue on forever, let's look in between two points. When I plug in negative 4, right? when I plug in negative 4, I get out what? So you're going to over there and get out. There's that point right there. Negative three. When I plug in negative four, I get out. Negative three is the output, right, is a vertical. We get negative three. When I, what, is, what does this point tell me about the function? What does this point tell you about the function, Bridget? That there's going to be another on the exact opposite side. Well, okay, the, that, the symmetry tells me that, but this point specifically, <coughs> what does it tell me about the function? Where is this point? Point the coordinates? Yeah. <coughs> Negative six. I know it's hard to see back there. It's negative five. Negative five and nine. Negative nine. All right, Bridger, so what does that negative five and negative nine tell me about the function itself? It tells you that negative five is x and yep. negative nine is f. If I were to think of it as, as an input-output thing, if I were to plug in negative 5, I would get out in my output, negative 9. Aiden? Every positive number is subtracting 6. What do you mean by that? Three and negative seventeen. That would be minus eight. I would have to subtract eight to get to negative seventeen. You guys are way fidgety today. Let's chill out on the fidget. We've got time, okay? And you feel like you're all get somewhere really important to go right now. We have plenty of time left in class. It's not like seven days. Yeah, so let's chill. It's a class. It's just fidgety and chocolate. I'm like a slug right Here's what I want. I want you to guess. Okay? Just to recap here, Bridger just reminded us if I plug in negative five into the function, I get negative nine. If I plug in negative four into the function, I get negative three. Guess. Make a guess. If I were to plug in negative. 4.5 or 
it's like a negative 4.5. Your guess is negative 6? Guess of negative 6. 6.5. 6.5? Uh, you think it'll be a decimal? Yeah. Okay, that's a bad I'm guess. We're talking a negative 4.5 here and here. It probably won't work out to a nice one. It would be 6.25. Positive 4.5? Positive 2 point. No, I'm asking about if you plug in negative 4.5. We have had one guess so far. A guess of negative 6, which I think is a pretty good guess. 7.25. 7.25, that'd be up here. Oh, negative. Oh, negative 7.25. You think it's negative 7.25, which would be about there? Yeah. You think it's there? Okay. I think 6 is a little closer to what, what we would actually get. Any other guesses? 6.5. 6. Negative 6.25. Let's have another guess. 6.5. Negative 6.5? Yeah. Okay. Negative 6.5 is right there. I don't have a guess on it. Well, all the guesses are falling in here, and when I suggested that there might be one up here, you said no. Why is that? Why do you think that a guess of like 7 or 7.5 would not be right? Everything else is down in this region, right? Yeah. It's all down in this one that we definitely did exactly right is negative three. This one's negative nine. Stands to reason that if I were to plug in something between negative four and negative five, I get something between negative three and negative nine. So something up here is not probably not right. Something way down here is probably not right. Something in here would be correct. So let's let's keep this guess of six. I think that's probably the closest guess we've had so far. I think it's a little low. 6.5 is... What's your guess if we were to plug in 1.5? Oh, 4.5. 3.5. Negative 1.5. Is that 1.5? You think you'll get negative what? 1.5. Negative 1.5? I would say that. I don't know. Just guess. I hear a negative six. Negative is a guess. six, yeah. Yeah, negative Why don't we just do the problem? Negative five. Negative five. Negative five. Negative five. Negative four. Six sounds reasonable. Yeah. Why does it seem so? Wasn't six our last guess for negative four point five? Yeah. Well, if we were to follow that symmetry, then it certainly would seem to fit in really well. Symmetry. Um, so it seems like negative six is a pretty good guess? Yeah. I agree. Okay. How about if I were to plug in 0.5? If I were to plug in 0.5, what's your guess for that? Um, plug in 0.5. Two or higher. One. One. Yeah. Two or higher. One. Negative two or higher. Negative Sorry. two or lower. Somewhere in there? Or lower, yeah. Maybe there, maybe here. Negative 1.5. 1.5, maybe? Yeah. Two. That seems like a reasonable guess. If I were to keep on guessing at where these points would go, I would guess that if I were to go to this x value, my point might wind up there. If I were to go to this x value, my point might wind up there. I would guess that there are points here, 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 and here, and here, and here. Are we all in agreement that my guesses are OK? Yeah. OK. Yes. Here, and here, and here, and here, and I think probably, right, I've got to get down here. I bet there's points between these two points. Probably not in a straight line, right? Because the whole thing's not a straight line. And I bet there's points in here, and I bet there's points to go up there, and I bet there's points all in between here. And I'm just making guesses, and what if I were to guess, and guess, and guess, and guess, and guess, eventually I get a solid line. Exactly, I get a solid line. If I could guess an infinite number of points, or even plot accurately, it is two points. Okay, so what is this curve made of? Made of dots. dots. Points. So a graph, there's 
put it in general, a graph is any curve, straight line or a curvy line or whatever, is made of, stop zipping up your stuff. You guys have been fidgeting the whole class, and it's wasting your own time. Chill out. You've been doing it since we've had 30 minutes of class. Calm down. Okay, so a graph, it's made of, infinite points. <coughs> it's made of infinite points. Made of infinite points. We could say a lot of things about a graph, but that's a really important one. It's made of an infinite number of Points. So if I draw a graph, like a triangle, right? that's the graph that I drew. What I'm saying is, all of these points exist. right? And each point says something about the function. It gives an input and an output. Let's just look at this triangle and talk about this point and this point. Just the idea that those two points could exist simultaneously. Is that possible? No. no. Yeah. I mean, I, both those points might be wrong, but at most, one point could be right. They couldn't both be right. Why could these two points not both be right? Well, because they could be like height or height, like the same height as something, and not the same far away. And it can be the same far away from the line, but not height from the line or something. So, each one of those points are right for something else, but they don't go together. Hmm. I'm not sure what you're close to say so there. If you look over there, that one on the bottom, it, that point's at six, below six, and then that point, but it's not over by, oh, like, what is it, two? Think more in terms of what this point would say about this function. Yeah. Right? This point. This point looks like it's at negative 2, negative 6. If this graph did have the point negative 2, negative 6 on it, what would it mean about the function? Nope, it would not mean that it's irrelevant. What if this point was on the graph of this function? What would this point at negative 2, negative 6 tell us about this function? Um, that, um, well, function So these two points, let's say this one's negative 2 comma 0.5. What Daniela is saying is that this one has, this is saying about the function, if you plug in negative 2, you'll get 0.5. This one's saying if you plug in negative 2, you'll get negative 6, which is impossible. It's saying you would get two different answers. You get two different inputs. Could you possibly get two different inputs if you plug a number in for x? We did it several times. We only ever got one output. So we can't have one, one point above another point. When you draw the shape of the graph, you're making a guess at all of the points and therefore the inputs and outputs mm -hmm. of the function. Kyle? And also in the table, the, um, for the input and the output, we uh -huh. have negative 2 and the answer is still negative 3. So we even have done that one specifically. We know that negative 2, 3 is, is correct. Okay. So just an abundance of evidence telling us this triangle is not what the graph is supposed to look like uh, for several different reasons. What we need to do is get an idea of what this graph would look like if we could plot all those infinite number of points, just point after point after point after point after point, which we can't do. All we can do is graph some number of points and then guess where all of the other points are supposed to be. <coughs> the reason why I bring this up, it's important because uh, a common misconception is that a graph is uh, a couple of points and then connect the dots. It's not connect the dots. The thing that we're connecting it with is actually just a bunch of other points that we don't have the time to put on the graph. We don't have the time to do the math. We don't have the time to even plot the points, even if we knew where all of them were supposed to be. Okay. 
and we can't have one point be above another because there's only one output for every input. Okay. It took a lot longer than it should have. Okay. Let's relax next class. <laughs>